one auto attack, two auto attack, three. There we go. That's literally that easy. It's use your auto attack. You basically have two. What is going on guys welcome back to another video so in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how to build and play jean Kui in season eight of smite and the two main roles i'm going to be talking about is going to be mid lane and solo lane in uh, conquest and uh, like i mentioned previously for mages the mid lane build can be used for joust and arena as well uh, because you know it's just building magical damage items so uh, whatever i say for the mid lane build you can use that in joust and arena as well uh, but the main thing I'm going to talk about is going to be mid lane and solo for which I will leave timestamps in the description below for when I'm talking about them. I'll also leave timestamps for when I'm talking about tips and tricks for playing Jean Kui, how you should be using his abilities in which order and then also which um, order you should level the abilities in like max them out uh, as well. Uh, I'll also leave a video in the description below of me using Jean Kui in mid lane uh, which I just released uh, and it just basically shows how the build works. Uh, so without further ado let's get into the build so i've put like a rough layout over here but again uh, i'll put a disclaimer out right now that the build is not just one uh, specific build that you always use in every game and it works because uh, as you know experienced my players know if you're new then i'll explain it but um the items you buy also depend on the people that you're fighting in that specific game so you could have no healers on the opposite team which means you don't need to get like a divine ruin because that's anti-heal but if you do have healers then you know you'll get a divine ruin or you could get um a tainted steel into like a tainted breastplate if they're physical or tainted amulet if they're magical so these are situational things i'm going to talk about as well but there's going to be a rough theme um or general build that you're going to be doing so the way I start in mid lane first of all is what I'm going to talk about is uh, Conduit Gem and wow, first tier Bancrofts uh, along with three health parts and one, uh, two mana parts. So that's going to be your 1500 gold. <coughs> the main reason for this is that Conduit Gem just helps your clear a lot. Uh, Vamp Shroud is good especially with the lifesteal and health and stuff it gives you back but it got nerfed recently and most of the time in mid lane you're going to be fighting a magical god and that gives physical protection which is why i choose to build this um in solo lane usually because you know you're going to be versing a warrior most likely but in mid lane uh, i like to conduit gem into first tier bancrofts uh, i'll then try in my first back to either get full life steel boots or the tier two but after that before we finish bancrofts we're going to go uh life steel boots uh, and then we'll finish the bancrofts and this by itself firstly you're going to be doing a lot of damage you already have 200 power not to mention that you get another 100 when you get up to 25 percent health uh your life is going to be crazy you've got 15 percent plus an extra 20 percent from bancrofts which is 35 percent uh plus an extra eight percent from uh shoes of magi so your life is going to be crazy if you see in the videos the reason jean is so good when he's fighting and he just pops his ult is because he's life stealing so much that it's just crazy really um which is why you want to go bancrofts um people do usually go um rod of tahuti yes it does give you a lot of damage and mp5 but with jean Kui, the healing is so good that you out sustain the enemy anyway and that's why you're going to kill them so that's why you go uh bancrofts then it's kind of up to you uh between uh karen's coin chronos pendant and gem of isolation and rod like in some situations if you're ahead go rod because you're going to be doing so much damage if you're not ahead and you want cooldown you're like oh i keep dying because i want cooldown go chronos pendant uh if they're really tanky go karen's coin me in most cases i like to go no, gem just because um here are the abilities uh if you click k on pc so his one uh is a slow a 20 percent slow that lasts for five seconds and uh gem of isolation does a 20 percent slow for one second uh, to enemies that are hit by damaging abilities that basically means that if you get a gem and you put your one on an enemy, they're going to be slowed for five seconds uh, by 40%. And that is just crazy. I mean, it's a bit toxic. I'm not going to lie. Um, and really annoying for the enemy, that is. But if you're just like running and uh, like I just put this on him, like he just becomes so slow. Like he just he can't get away. Um, which is the main reason that you get that and not only that but your one can hit multiple enemies so if you're if you got a, a teammate who's like running away you just throw your one and you can hit like three people and they're all slow and you can get away uh, and just you know help your team like that 
so that's why I get a gem. It's just really good in the early, mid, late game. Well, th throughout the whole game, really. Uh, not to mention as well that it gives you 200 health and 10% crowd reduction, which is a bonus. Uh, your passive gives you protection, so having more health is just better anyway. Um, then I like to go Kronos Pendant or Karen's Coin. If they're just really tanky and I'm just like, okay, I can't kill them, I'll go the Karen's Coin. But most of the time I'll just go a Kronos Pendant just because then you can spam your one more. Um, the one is probably one of your best abilities just because the one is slows. Uh, number two, it does a decent amount of damage. So if you check here, it's 60 plus, I don't know how much percent of your power it is, uh, but it's for five seconds. Uh, so it's basically five ticks of damage. So you multiply that by five. And the amount of times where, you know, you just put this on someone, they're really slow. Your team can choose to attack them if they want. If they don't want to attack them, they still take that damage over time. And it's just really, really good for poke. You can just keep going in. Um, let's test it out on, like, a Neath. Who, I'm just going to put it on her and then walk off. So, you know, I'm just like, she's, number one, she's slow. She can barely move. And it does some decent damage. Like that's that's the that's the main purpose of it. <coughs> it's really good poke, and even when you're clearing wave, uh, you can put that through the wave and hit the enemy, and uh, it, you know it does really good damage. That's why you want always want to have that on cooldown, uh, which is why I like Chronos Pendant. It's just some nice poke. Then based on if they're really really tanky, I'll go Karen's Coin. If not, I'll probably go that last time when I sell boots, cause I'm not too bothered about the stacks. Uh, I'm more just bothered about the 20% penetration that it gives. Uh, Obsidian Shard is a bit over the top, just because it gives 20% and then an extra 10%. Like, I don't need 30% uh, because I already get 10% from that and 30% is more than enough. 40%, uh, I just prefer the passive then from Kyron's Coin, the HP5 and the MP5. Um, not to mention that it gives, oh no, it gives the same power. But I just think Kyron's Coin is better uh, because of the stacks that it gives you. Uh, so most of the time I will just go rod here uh, and then conduit gem uh, this is actually up to you so both of these items are really good uh, this just does a lot of damage that is really good because if you do have cooldown and you're spamming your abilities um, that will stack uh, up to three times and give you movement speed uh, damage increase and damage uh, taken reduction uh, which is really good but recently we're from playing Vulcan uh, and Jonquy, but uh, I play Vulcan usually in mid uh, and Jonquy when I'm feeling him, but Vulcan uh, uses this item really well and the spamming of abilities, you just do a lot more damage output. So at this point, I would say it's up to you. Um, with Jonquy, I'd go Gemma Focus, mainly for the damage reduction. Uh, your passive gives you 40 magical and physical protections and just, you know, adding on the, the damage reduction from... Um, what is this called? Gemma Focus is just just insane really and you can just tank so much more even though you're going like full damage so not only do you do a lot of damage but you can tank as well uh, which is why I go that and then you can sell uh, your shoes for Karen's Coin uh, now just to clarify you can go Karen's Coin first um, and then sell your boost for Gem uh, for Rod but that's completely up to you <coughs> and based on the game that you're in and the damage that they're doing uh, secondly I'm going to talk about situational items now. Now, if they are healing a lot, I will go Divine Ruin here. Uh, Divine Ruin into a gem, into a Kronos Pendant. If not a Kronos Pendant, a Karen's Coin. Uh, but again, like sometimes, you know, <coughs> if you want to get anti-heal, you're going to have to sacrifice something because you're getting an item uh, like Divine Ruin instead of like a Kronos Pendant or a gem. <coughs> uh, gem, I think, is a must-have on Jankui anyway because it works really well with his one. Uh, which is why I'd still go Gem of Isolation as soon as possible after the Divine Ruin. Uh, but if they're not healing, then I'll just go uh, Gem of Isolation, Chronos Pendant, uh, Karen's Coin or Rod, and then just sell that uh, for a Karen's Coin. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, the build I use. If you watch my videos and I use something else, uh, that again is just situational dependent. Or in that situation, I thought, you know what? They've got a lot of health. I'm going to go a Soul Reaver instead because I'm using a lot of abilities. And the Soul Reaver, because it does percentage health damage, I'm going to get that instead of, uh, let's say, a Rod or a Karen's Coin or whatever. Uh, but that is up to you. Um, if they're not doing a lot, if they're not getting a lot of anti heal, sure, I'm not going to get the Rod. I'm going to get Typhon's Fang instead because I'm going to be healing a lot more. Uh, just because it increases your lifesteal healing by 30%. Um, 
Uh, so that's about it for the build for mid lane. This just works really well whenever I play. Uh, and that's what I'd recommend that you build when you are playing mid lane. Uh, if you do have any questions or you watch my video, which I leave in the description below of, you know, you built that instead. Uh, you can go for that build as well. Like I said, when I'm in a game that I'm like, you know, oh, maybe this item would be better. Maybe that item would be better. Some people comment like in your guide, you said get this item, but you got that item instead. Uh, yeah, no, you can get what you want, like based on the situation. This is like a rough guide of build this in this order. Like, build Bancrofts first because the lifesteal early game is insane. Certain things will never change, like, the first three items or the first four items. They will, like, never change because they're, like, his core items. Uh, so, I'll say that now that these four items are his core items. Um, that's supposed to be uh, Conduit Gem. After that, you know, if you want cooldown, you go that. It's all about preference now. If you want to get light, um, anti heal, you get that. If you want to get more lifesteal, get a Typhons. Uh, but most of the time, this is the general theme I go for. I can even swap, if I have gold uh, for rod, I'll always go rod first then because it's 10% penetration and just a lot of damage. So I'll go rod there and then Chronos Pendant or Karen's coin if they're really tanky because then I'll just one shot them. And then into Gemma Focus. Um, and then yeah, sell that, sell the shoes for, for Karen's coin. So that is the final build that I usually like going, but it can differ if something is happening in the game that's going to make me change my mind uh relics i will usually start off with an aegis just because for example you know you can pop your uh, ult and then just aegis really <laughs> it just works really well if you are about to die or whatever um you just aegis and then pop your ult uh, or you pop your ult and then aegis and then you're doing damage still uh and you're not taking any damage it's just really well and then beads, you know, if they got Ares, Adagi, you get a beads. If you don't want to get a beads, you can get a blink ruin. It's just really good. You can blink ult. You just walk up and be like, hey. And then just start slowing them and whatnot. Uh, if you want to go a bit more tanky, help your team, uh, go shell. Or if you just want to help your team in general to uh, get more kills, go uh, uh, heavenly wings. But relics wise, I got Aegis and then something else really. Uh, but that is completely up to you. Um, relics are always up to the person playing, really. Uh, so that will be it for the the mid lane build and Joust and Arena build. His basically magical uh, damage build. Um, so I'll quickly sell these items. Sell Rod as well. Uh, okay, so now we're going to talk about the solo lane build. Now, in my opinion, John Kui is definitely S tier in solo lane. Uh, I'll be releasing some videos of John Queen Solo Lane. He is insane. Even a Kukulan who, who like weaken or something, put in S tier. I beat them very easily just because of number one, like I've mentioned, the poke of the one, and number two, the just the damage and sustain really, because you heal from your two as well, and then. Uh, you'll see from the build why the stain is good. So, if I'm against a physical god, I will go Vampiric Who's Shroud, which it is most of the time. If it's not, if it's um, if it's uh, you know, if it's a physical god, um, so in solo lane I will go Vamp Shroud against a physical god, and if it's a magical god, I will usually go uh, this Warrior's Axe, just because it gives some magical protection. You can go Tainted Steel as well if you want, if it's like a Changa or something. Uh, but most of the time it's physical, so I'll go Vamp Shroud. If not, uh, I go Warrior's Axe. Um, but mostly it's just Vamp Shroud. And then I'll go into first tier. Uh, tiny Trinket. And then I think I have four, 200 gold left. So I'll get two health potions and two multi bots. And then I'll obviously I will we'll get a uh, Teleport. So that is the basic start for solo lane that I go. Uh, number one, you get lifesteal from Vamp Shroud and uh, Tiny Trinket. So it just helps you sustain in lane. And it's just a really good start. And you've got 45 power, so your clear is definitely not bad. And, you know, if they try and poke you or whatever, it's not going to make that much of a difference because you're going to be doing a decent amount of damage uh, as well. And not to mention that you'll be healing. So if it's like a Kukulun or Sun Wukong, other than healing from their ult or something, uh, well, for Sun Wukong's case, um, they can't really compete with you. So on my back, again, similar to the mid lane build, I'll finish off shoes and then I'll finish off Bancrofts. So even though you're in solo lane, number one, your passive gives you 40 protections, magical and physical. You got some physical protections against the warriors uh, from Vamp Shroud. And not to mention that you got lifesteal boots, uh, lifesteal from Vamp Shroud and lifesteal from Bancroft. So your sustain is going to be more than enough. Even if you get ganked by the jungler, you're going to have a lot of lifesteal to sustain. And uh, that is why you want to start off like that. Uh, next, 
is where it's like up to you. So you can either go, let's say, a breastplate for the 20% cooldown. If it is a warrior, you can go a gem of isolation. It's going to make you tanky because it'll give you 200 health and crowd control reduction and a decent amount of power and just increases your poke game because you can slow them by 40% using your one. If not, you can go Pridwin or a Mystical Mail as well. That's why I have that here. Sometimes I ju I'm just like, I don't want to get Breastplate just because I'm going to get my cooldown from Pridwin. And I don't want to overcap because Pridwin gives 20%, Breastplate gives 20%, uh, Red Pot will give another 10%, and then I might want to go Mantle of Discord. Uh, so that'll just give me like 60% cooldown. So I just go Pridwin like in general, which is why I'll go like a Mystical Mail at this point, just because it gives that um, damage over time as well. Uh, and it's just really good health and tankiness. But uh, in most cases, I'm like, you know, I don't want to get Mantle of Discord. So I will just go uh, a Breastplate here. Uh, that gives you 20% cooldown and tankiness and MP5. So it just makes your, like, early to mid game a lot better. Especially in solo lane. You got, you've gone tankier. Um, that's 135 plus an extra 40 from my passive uh, when it's fully stacked. So that's 175. Uh, at this point... I will go Gem of Isolation because I don't want to go into the defensive item because I already have one and I want to go a bit more damage just so you know I can team fight. I've got the physical protections, I've got almost uh, 90 protections from my passive, uh, well 40, an extra 40 from my passive so that'll be like 88, 90 protections when I'm fighting. Uh, so I don't want to go into the defensive item. If you want, like you're like I want more cooldown and protections, go Pridwin instead. That's perfectly fine. Uh, you'll do an extra damage from your ult as well when you activate it from the shield. You go Pridwin, then Gem of Isolation. Or if you're feeling like more aggressive, go Gem of Isolation, then Pridwin. But that, that part is completely up to you. I prefer the Gem of Isolation into a Pridwin. So now you've got your 40% cooldown, your slow, your health from that as well. Um, and you have your life steal as well. So you got that sustain. So this build works really, really well. Uh, in some cases as well, if you're like, you know, I don't want the cooldown yet, I want some more physical protection, go the Mystical Mail. Uh, or there you can go the Mystical Mail, Gem of Isolation, then Pridwin. But uh, that is completely up to you. Most cases, I will go um, for a Breastplate. Just because I think the cooldown's nice from it. Uh, and then a Pridwin. Uh, I'll finish Vamp Shroud, obviously with Bloodstoke Shroud, because I don't want to be using my health. Uh, every time I use an ability, so I'll go Blood Soak Shroud, and then I will sell boots for usually a Mystical Mail, but again, this can be literally whatever you want. The last item is fully up to you. Yes, if you go Mantle of Discord, you'll be overcapping the cooldown, but nevertheless, that's just one stat of it. It still gives 60 physical protection, 60 magical protection, and uh, that little shockwave when you get to 30% health. Uh, so that's a really good item. Mystical Mail is also a decent item. If they don't have a lot of anti-heal, definitely go, uh, I mean, Mail of Renewal. Uh, it's a really good item now. It gives you physical and magic protections, 300 health, 15 MP5, and when you are hit by an enemy, uh, I think it stacks five times, and then you're healed for 50% of your maximum health. So you can see here right now, I'm 2550. With Mystical Mail, I'm 2850, so I'll be healed for 15% of that. Uh, so that is always a good item, but that's mainly if they don't have anti-heal, because if you do have anti-heal, then you don't get the full effect of it. Uh, in most cases at this point, uh, I'll either go a mystical mail or uh, like a bulwark isn't bad either, just because it gives you a shield basically and a decent amount of health. Uh, void stone isn't bad either, just because you have no penetration in your build, that's why that'll be really good. Uh, you can go shoguns if you want, yes, it'll make you overcap cooldown, but you know, if you have those hunters on your team... Um, and assassins that attack speed, uh, well, that rely on attack speed, and the guardians got like a pestilence instead or something, and you uh, chose not to get anti heal, you can get shoguns instead, uh, because at the end of the day, it's an aura item and it's going to help your team. Uh, but most of the time, well, there's not even most of the time really, because like there's a there's a lot of stuff you can get. You can get a pestilence if you want if they're healing, uh, which you would get I don't know in the place of Pridwin, and then you get a Pridwin over there. Um, but me personally, if I had to choose one item, I like to go oh Mystical Mail. Just because you all, and then you're just like, still doing a decent amount of damage, uh, really. And then you get that shield, and then that will explode and do damage. So, uh, that's pretty much the generic build I go in solo lane. Again, the order can probably change. The build is not always this, just because of, you know, whatever situation you're in, whatever scenario you're in, you might have to go anti-heal. You can go Tainted Steel if you're versing someone who heals a lot in solo lane. Uh, but that is a generic build. Uh, I'll just show that this build also does, like, decent damage in 
<coughs> in general. So like, it can still destroy someone, um, just by doing a general combo, and then I can slow them for the other three can barely move. Uh, so that is a generic build for solo lane. Um, I'll first talk about the level ability order and then I'll give you tips for playing Junkui. Um, oh, Relics I didn't really mention for solo lane. Uh, I don't know, after this you can go shell or whatever. Again, Relics is completely up to you. Uh, so level ability order, I usually, ha I think I have it set on like something I set up like a long time ago where I do a decent amount of damage by maxing my one first and you might be wondering, you know, why you're maxing your one. Um, if you look at uh, where it says, uh, if the card is removed, 75% of the remaining damage is done instantly. So when you do that, and then you do your two, you remove the card with your two and your three, basically. So if you max your if if you max your one, then all that damage is done instantly. So if I have it from 20 plus whatever or 60 plus whatever, five times that is done instantly when I use my two or when I use my three, which is the main reason why I usually like to max my one. If you're thinking more healing, uh, like from your two, then max your two first. I usually max my one, two, three, and then ult, uh, mainly because you do your one, two combo, and when you max out your one, and then you do your two, you do a lot of damage anyway. And then when you max your two, your one, two combo does insane damage. Your three is mainly used for CC. I don't really use the three aggressively. It's more for defensive, stunning, and then your ult again is obviously aggressive. If anything, I'd probably level my three last. I'll do my one, two, four, three. Yeah, your three is mainly for CC, especially if you have your card on them. Uh, they get stunned for two seconds, basically. Uh, but yeah, no, max your one because the damage is done. Seventy-five percent of the remaining damage is done instantly uh, when you remove it with your two, and your two does a lot of damage anyway. So uh, when you max your one and two, then you'll do a lot of damage and a lot of burst. And like you'll see in the video uh, that I released of my Jean Kui gameplay, a lot of the time you can just fifty percent or kill someone who's got 50% health just because that's how much burst you're gonna have you literally uh, do 50% of the health as damage uh, when you do your one uh, so that's basically how you want to be leveling his abilities uh, now into tips and trip uh, tips and tricks should I say not trips uh, I'm just gonna sell these items and then go for my for my main my main build which is gonna be this I'll, I'll keep uh, shoes just because a lot of people, you know, might not get to the point where they're, where they're able to sell that. Uh, well, relics really don't matter. So number one is try and poke them out first. So tip number one for John Kui is poke them out. I'll put them by a relic because our message is going to pop up. Uh, I'll sell that as well just so I got get around quick. So number one is just poke them out. If you're just in lane. Take advantage of your of your one and poke them out, uh, clear wave or whatever. And then when they come close, you saw that, right? Let's just go through that again. Fifty percent health and damage. That is just crazy damage. Like that damage is crazy. I don't understand why he does that much damage. So that's why you poke them out with your one because no one expects. Zhang Kui damage. This guy's gonna die in like two seconds. Okay. So, tip number one poke them with your one. When they're low enough, then you can kill them. You can even do your one on them, you use your three. And then when they think they can kill you, you just do your one. There you go. You just literally took it. And you think it's just, oh, it's a robot or whatever. Check out my video. Uh, in the description below of actual gameplay where I just do 50% health as damage. Uh, so tip number one, uh, poke them out with your one especially. Get them to like 50% health and then just burst them down. <coughs> tip number two would be uh, optimize the way you use your three and two. It's because sometimes if you're in a team fight, maybe using your three is a better option just because your team can get more damage off uh, on the gods uh, than you could with your two. Uh, because if you get your one and three on them, you're going to stun them for two seconds. That is a long stun. And I did half of his health. So you'll do a lot of damage as well. Uh, so tip number two is optimize your three and two. Don't always just go, hey, I want to do a lot of damage. Sometimes you just really well to CC them. 
Um, there's not really much tips for Junk Queen, I don't think about it. But uh, also, I guess, optimize your ult. So tip number three is optimize your ult. Uh, another good thing is that if you have your ult, put your one of them and then ult. So not only are they slow, but then you can you know, take that out of them as well. So if you do that, you can stun them in your ult if you do that the way. Uh, that is. So I'm gonna wait for my for my ult to come up. So do that. So now you slow. You stun him in your ult. So a lot of the time, what I like to do is stun him in my ult. If I can't stun, uh, if I can't do that, then I'll just do my two and just do like a lot of damage. Uh, which just reminds me, in tip four is use auto attacks in between whatever you're doing. So you'll see all the time that I'll do my one auto attack, two auto attack, three auto attack. Uh, and I'll like demonstrate that here right now. So auto attack, one, auto attack, three, one. If moving far away, like, I'm gonna go really close to him next time. So one, auto attack, two, auto attack, three. That's how you, that's like tip number four really. Do your one, optimize the auto attacks basically just cause you know, you do get extra, uh, extra damage from your from your three, because you're doing twice the amount of basic attack. So I just show that one last time. Do your one, auto attack, two, auto attack, three, auto attack. If you want to see me, that would kill them faster. One, auto attack, two, auto attack, three. There we go. That's literally how easy it is. Use your auto attack, you basically have two. Uh, one last time, just because it looks really cool. One, auto attack, two, auto attack, three, auto attack. Well, I didn't even need to auto attack it then. Uh, but yeah. That's basically how you burst an enemy down uh, as fast as possible. Maximize your auto attacks in between abilities. And uh, yeah, I think I've covered everything that is for Zhang Kui. Uh, so I spoke about the mid lane, which you can use in Arena and Joust as well. And then I've talked about the solo lane uh, and what you build in that and how you go more tanky, basically. Uh, the reason Zhang Kui can go more damage than defensive items is just because he gets 40 from his passive, 40 magical and 40 physical uh, protections from his passive which is just really strong and that's the main reason i play him in solo lane because he has that uh, natural or passive tankiness uh, but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you didn't make sure to leave a like down below uh, leave a comment of why you enjoyed it or why you didn't enjoy it or anything uh, that you disagree with or something you want to add into the guide that you know i could maybe pin uh, or give a heart to so that people could see it uh, also, if you want to see any of the gods, leave that in the description below as well. If I do play those gods, then sure, I'll be more than happy to make a build on that. Uh, but other than that, like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.